take our Bibles and turn to the book of Ephesians, <laughs> Ephesians chapter number one, <laughs> Ephesians chapter, you're going to? <laughs> I better not pick on Brother Henry. All right, Ephesians chapter number one. I want to draw your attention this morning to Paul's prayer for the church at Ephesus. He is in prison, and as a prisoner, he is writing this letter uh, to a wonderful church at Paul's in Paul's time, and he is uh, is praying for them. And he reveals what he's praying, uh, asking the Lord to do for them, and so. Uh, one of the things that you could do with this prayer, if you're a believer, if you know Christ, is you could pray that prayer for yourself and for your brothers and sisters in Christ. That's a good model prayer. So what, how, well, how can I pray for my church family? Take this prayer 
and pray it uh, for your church family, for your Christians, uh, brothers and sisters in Christ, that God would open up our understanding to spiritual truth, and we would know what we possess in Christ, uh, and uh, some of these things that we'll look at this morning. We really want to focus in on his last part of this petition and talk to you this morning about the greatness of his power. Paul even said the exceeding greatness of his power. Isn't that good? The exceeding greatness of his power. And so let's look at verse number 15 of Ephesians chapter number 1. Wherefore I also, after the heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and love unto all the saints, cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. This is what his prayer is. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, that you might learn more about Jesus. Amen. All right? The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, for what purpose? That you may know what is the hope of his calling and what is the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. These three requests, next request. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us who believe according to the working of his mighty power? What, what power that will work in us? Look at verse 20. Which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in heavenly places. That's great power. Isn't it? Amen. That's the power that's working in you as a Christian. Far above all principality, he's talking about where Christ is, his position. Far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come, there is no one greater than Jesus. Amen. One of these days, every knee will bow, your knee will bow. Amen. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Uh, I, I willfully and joyfully confess Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. <laughs> he is my Lord. I love the fact that he is my Lord. Amen. Uh, but even those who are rebels against him, one day will bend the knee and say, yes, Jesus, you are Lord. I'm looking forward to when the devil has to creep up there and bend the knee and say, Jesus, you are indeed Lord. Amen. Amen. And then he says, uh, after far above, verse 22, and hath put all things under his feet, whose feet? Jesus. And gave him to be head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you so much for this morning. Lord, we worship you. You're the only true and living God. There is no, none beside you. Lord, you have declared that in your word. Lord, we ask that you would help us this morning to worship you in spirit and in truth. Lord, we bless your holy name. We say hallelujah to you. We praise you. Lord, we want to give you the glory that you rightfully deserve. And Lord, we want you to know that we love you. And Lord, we want your help to help us to love you more perfectly, more completely. Lord, with all of our heart, with all of our mind, with all of our soul. Lord, with all of our being, with all of our strength, that in every way, God, we might love you as you deserve to be loved. We pray, God, this morning that you would speak to us through the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Lord, that you would bring us spiritual understanding. Give us eyes to see and ears to hear and a heart that would understand your word. Lord, we, we pray if there's any among us that are lost and they don't know Christ as their Savior, that somehow, God, that you would help them to see how much that you love them and care for them. Lord, reveal to them you're not their enemy. Um, Lord, Satan is their enemy who's trying to destroy their life and their soul. We pray, God, they would turn uh, from the things of this world and they would turn to Christ this morning. Father, please speak to my heart. Speak to all of our hearts and help us, Lord, that we might hear from heaven and they might do your will. Bless the message. Help us to be obedient to you in Jesus name. 
We pray and ask these things. Amen. Amen. When Paul was in prison, he wrote letters to the churches. And in those letters, he recorded four different prayers. If you want to look at his prayers, not this morning, not right now, but you can go to Philippians chapter 1, verses 9 through 11. There's a prayer for Christians there. Or Colossians 1, verses 9 through 12. Again, there's a prayer for the believers there. And then later on in the book of Ephesians, Ephesians 3, verses 14 through 21. And then, of course, this prayer. So if you want to find out how to pray for fellow believers, those are some good places to go to. Another good place to go to would be John chapter 17, when our Lord is interceding for us as well, so that you and I could learn to pray for one another. Uh, Paul says, this is what I'm praying for. Look at verse number 17, that the God of our Lord Jesus, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. I want you to know who Jesus is. Amen. Now, some of us, we, we know that he is God in flesh, that he left heaven, was born a virgin, that he lived a sinless life, and then he took our sins to Calvary, suffered and bled and died to pay the price that you and I owed, laid his life down, and then early one Sunday morning took it back up again. He is alive today, and if you would call upon him, he would hear you. If you're lost and you'd call upon him, this resurrected Jesus would save you. Amen? Amen. You say, preacher, how do you know he'll save you? Because that's what he did for me. When I came to an altar, I said, Lord, I'm sorry for my sins. I want to be saved. Jesus saved me, and Jesus did exactly that. I called upon the name of the Lord, and the Lord saved me, and the Lord will save you too as, as well. Amen? Amen? But he wants our understanding. He wants us to know more about Jesus. There's one thing. I knew something about Jesus at salvation, but listen, Jesus is infinite. He is amazing. He is wonderful. Amen. There's so much more about Jesus that all of us need to learn. Don't be satisfied with your current knowledge of Christ. I am deficient in my knowledge of him. I want to experience Christ more. I want to know what it is to have a personal walk with God. I want to know how to walk with him, fellowship with him, um, be used of him, follow him. I want to know more about Jesus, and that should be the desire of every single Christian. Amen? Amen. I'm not satisfied with just a ticket to heaven. I hope you're not. I, I love my wife, and, uh, you know, people used to say, that, you know, the longer you stay together, you love them more and more, and I thought, I don't know about that, you know. <laughs> How can you love, how can I love her more than I love her now? Years ago, I would think that. But it's absolutely true. The more time you spend with someone, the more you realize how deeply you can love someone. And I'm just challenged in my own spirit to want to love Jesus more deeply. And Paul said, get to know him. He goes on to say in verse number 18, that God would open their eyes of understanding. That you would know, not wish or guess or wonder. You know what some of you are doing this morning? That's how it is with you and Jesus. You're, you, you're guessing. Well, this may be who Jesus is. If you listen to the devil, you're going to guess wrong. Amen. You may just assume or you may just wonder. That's not what God wants. God wants you to know Christ in truth. And that's what Paul is pleading for. God open their understanding. What are, what, does, what are the three things that he really asks God for? We're going to focus on the third one. But he says, what salvation provides. And like that they may know the hope of your calling. Help them to see what salvation provides. What did God do for you when he saved you? Well, he freed you from sins imprisonment. Isn't that good? I'm set free. I don't have to sin. If I sin, 
I give in to temptation. I'm no longer a slave to it. Amen. I've been set free. Who set you free, Brother Tommy? Jesus. And he sets everyone free that trust in him. Amen. Amen. Not only did he free me from my sins, but he forgave me of all my sins. What was your what is your sin debt like? Mine was a long list. Amen. Amen. And you know what Jesus did? He wiped them all away. Isn't that amazing? That's a wonderful love for Christ to erase all the sins. If you've committed against God. I am justified. Just as if I had never sinned. Amen. What does it provide? It provides most importantly a fellowship with God. When Christ saved you, you know what he wants when he saved you? He wants you to walk with God, to listen to God, to have fellowship with God. That's what God wants with you. He wants you to have fellowship with him. Isn't that wonderful? The creator of all things wants you to have fellowship with him. True. What salvation provides. What salvation promises. One of these days we're going to be in our eternal home called heaven. We have an inheritance, and that inheritance here can be taken both ways. Uh, It can be taken that we are Christ's inheritance. He says, "I, I, you are what I have earned at Calvary. You're my inheritance. But it also can be taken in this sense, we have received an eternal home, and that eternal home is with him forever in heaven. Oh, what a wonderful, wonderful day. Remember Amazing Grace, that last verse? We've been there 10,000 years. <laughs> It'll be just like a day. Amen? Amen. So. Dwelling with God forever and eternity. Boy, that's wonderful, isn't it? Amen. I tell you what, it sure beats the opposite of that. Amen. What happens to people who reject Jesus, who say, Jesus, I don't want your salvation. I don't want what you did at Calvary. I don't need your blood to pay this, uh, my sin debt. What happens to people who say no to God? They're cast into that awful prison that God has for people who reject his dear son. They spend eternity in the, pl- in the place called the Bible calls hell. Amen? Amen? So what is salvation's power source? I mean, here's his prayer. Help them to know more about Jesus. Help them to see what Christ has done for them. Help them to have a sense of what they're going to gain because of that relationship with God and their inheritance. And then also show them the mighty power of God that's working in them. And, and Christian, that's my burden this morning. Is I think we're, I am coming short of that. I don't know if you're coming short of that, but I'm coming short of that. Here is this wonderful, amazing power that raised our Lord from the dead. And Jesus, through Paul, says, you and I can plug into that power source. And we should have the strength and the ability and the power to live for God. And many Christians are not experiencing that power that God has provided for them. Paul said, I want you Ephesians to know the power that's available. I want you to see what God can do in your life. I want you to see the power of God that you can access. That is yours because of Christ. There is power, 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 wonder working power. Amen. Amen. And that power is available to every born again believer. If you've not been saved, come to Jesus and Christ will give you power as well. Amen. Amen. So how are we to understand this? What is this power like? Well, think about God's previous acts of power. How powerful is God? I tell you, he is beyond our comprehension when it comes to that. Amen? Have you ever just stopped and tried to meditate on these things? Go back to Genesis, the first 13 verses in Genesis. There is nothing but God. You say, preacher, where did God come from? He came from nowhere. He's eternal in his existence, which is necessary. It's necessary that God be eternal. Amen? 
He's always been, he always will be. He, he exists outside of time, outside of material things. He's an immaterial being. He is eternal. He's always been, listen to me, and he always will be. Nothing will diminish his power. Look at him in Genesis chapter 1. There's no light, and he says, let there be light. And he created it by just stating it. Amen. Now, some of you kind of, you know, you look at the comic book characters and Marvel heroes and all these imaginations and people have these kind of powers. My sons used to get in discussion. If you had a superpower, what would you want your superpower to be? Uh, did you ever settle that? What was it? Uh, there was an argument between them one time. Who, who would rather be Superman or Batman? I don't know if they ever settled that one either. <laughs> but you know, we can imagine. Oh, what kind of power? We're not talking about imaginary power. We're not talking about just the vain thoughts of men. We are talking about the true power of God. The reason the world is, is because it has a maker. Amen. We're not here by some cosmic accident. There was a dot somewhere in the universe that exploded. and Oh, look how everything just fell together. Does that make any sense to you? That's insanity. You know why we're here? God said, let there be light. And... Because he said it, that's, I'm telling you, that's power, isn't it? Yes, Not only did God say that, but God also spoke the universe into existence. He said, let the firmaments or the expanse between the atmosphere. He created that. You know, think about when he created the universe, he created universes. We, we're limited as far as what we can see, but we know it's far beyond our ability to reach how far is the universes that God has made. We don't, it baffles the mind of men. You look at the most amazing uh, telescopes they have, they can't see the end of it. <coughs> and someone said, well, isn't that, isn't that, all, isn't that all just a waste then? No, because when we look at it, we say, how powerful is God? Amen. He speaks it into existence and there are universes that are made. Amen. Did you get a sense of that power? Yep. The third day he spoke the earth and seas and waters. How did he make the earth and seas and waters? He said, let it be. The fourth day made the grass of various kinds, the trees, fruit trees, pine trees, different types of trees. Have you ever stopped and done I do this sometimes. Bruce works for trees all the time. And I think if I were to make trees, I would probably be able to make about two or three different kinds. Right? But when God made them, he made them multitudes. And they're not just made so they just look good. They're made for purpose, Amen. Amen. for utility. We can use them. We can eat from them. We're blessed by them. And God did all of that just by saying, let it be spoken into existence. He is a powerful, almighty God. Amen. And God is saying, I want you to learn to trust in that power. It's not you living the Christian life by yourself. I want you to see that God has made power available to you and you can do God's will. You can live for God. You can be a holy Christian. You can make a difference in this world. Your light can shine brightly. Why? Because God is the all-powerful God. Amen. And you and I have access to that power. Amen? Amen. By the way, I, I, I can't spend too much time on that, but you go through the Bible and you see how wonderful God is. Remember the day that they Joshua got in the battle and he was defeating the enemy, but the sun was about to go down and he prayed, God, stay the sun. And the Bible says, and the sun stood still. Amen. Amen. 
Scientists say, no, that's impossible. That cannot happen. The universe would rip apart if that were to happen. And they mock it. They say, look at that. It can't be true. It is true because God has the power to do it. Amen? Amen. Or in Isaiah's day, when he wanted to show the promise of God, he said, what do you want, king? You want the dial on the sundial to move forward 10 degrees or move back? Which one would you choose? Hezekiah said, well, if 10 degrees forward it isn't much at all. It goes forward all the time. How about taking it 10 degrees back, the sundial? Move time back 40 minutes. And God said, all right. And he moved the sundial back 40 minutes. Amen. I'm just trying to get you to see that God can do anything. There's nothing hard for God. Nothing impossible for God. God can save you. God, God can set you free from sin. God can meet the need in your life. He has the power to do that. That's what he's promised to do. The Christian live with this hope of God's power. The mighty power of God working in you. If you want to be amazed, look at the life of Jesus. Jesus gave sight to blind men who were born blind. He gave people who are paralyzed the ability to get up and walk. Is it, is it still 2024? Time goes by so fast. I'm thinking, you know, we're already halfway through this year, which is shocking. Is this speeding up for y'all? Time? Yes. But 2024, when someone's spinal cord is severed, there's not, there's not much we can do. Amen. We can give them a wheelchair. We can do things like that. But we are hopeless to meet the need of someone who has been paralyzed. But Christ, when he walked on the earth, healed those people and they were able to walk. Amen. You, said, you act like you believe that. Well, I believe it because it's in God's word. Amen. Amen. Not only did Christ heal the paralyzed, cast out demons, heal men from leprosy, but the widow Nain had lost her only son and Jesus raised him back to life. Jairus' daughter had died and Jesus brought her back to life. In John chapter 11, Lazarus was dead four days. Four days. And Christ went to the tomb and said, Lazarus, come forth. And he walked out of that tomb alive from the dead. Even a greater miracle, he died himself on the cross. And John, 18, John 10, 18 says, Jesus said, no man takes my life. I'll lay it down. And then what? And I'll take it up again. Amen. That's power. His life to cease, his heart to stop beating, blood stops flowing. He's dead three days. And then Christ says, I will pick that life back up again and walk out of that tomb of life from the dead. I'm trying to say to you this morning, he has the power. He's proven his power and he wants you to tap into that power. Amen. Amen. I want you to know something. It's not just God's previous acts. But God wants you. He wants you to walk in that power. That's what Paul's prayer is, isn't it? Mm -hmm. That you might experience the exceeding greatness of his power. The power that raised Jesus from the dead. That power is working. Isn't that Paul's plea? No, that, that God's power is available to you to live the Christian life. God wants you to experience that power. He wants you to live in that power. He wants you to trust in that power, rest in that power. Amen? Amen. Can you imagine being a, a father and you're looking down on your children and you see how weak and frail they are? Maybe they're trying to lift something that you know is too heavy for them. And if you're a father and you're looking on that or a mother and they're struggling with something, they just cannot do it. What is your desire as a parent when you see your child struggling with something that's just too much for them? What's your, what do you want to do? Help! You want to pick it up? You want to show yourself strong? You want, to, you want them to know you can trust in me. I will help you. Listen, God is far greater than we are. He looks upon us as his children. He wants us to experience 
The joy of seeing God's power come on the scene and do something that only God can do. Amen? In the nation of Israel, God provided power for them. In Deuteronomy chapter 1, verses 30 through 32, the Bible says this, The Lord your God which goeth before you. I say something to you, Christian, this morning, you're not alone. God is with you. God is engaged in your battles. He's engaged in your conflicts. He is, he is, he is with you. He will help you. You're not an orphan. You've not been left alone. God, His power is present to work in your life. Amen? Amen. He said this to, I'll go before you. Listen, and then God said, He shall fight for you according to all that He did for you in Egypt. Amen. How'd you like to be an Israelite? You're facing a new land, the land of Canaan. There's great armies over there, great giants. You don't know what to do. You don't know... How are we going to handle this? And God said, remember what I did for you in Egypt? Remember the ten plagues? Remember the Red Sea? Amen. Remember the victories I gave you? Remember the man I sent down from heaven? Water from a rock when you were thirsty? Look at all I've done in the past. And since I've done this in the past, I'll go before you and I will fight for you on the other side. Amen? Did he fight for them on the other side? Yes. And came to the walls of Jericho. It was too big for them. But it was small in God's eyes. Amen? Amen. All that I did in Egypt before your eyes. And in the wilderness. Where thou hast seen how that the Lord thy God. Bared thee. He carried you. All throughout the wilderness. God said I've got you. I've got you. Listen. Same thing is true in the Christian life. You are not alone. You are not alone. God is with you. Amen? Amen. Think about the early disciples. In Luke chapter 9, he sent his disciples out. How many of you remember what happened when he sent his, all, the 70 out? Did they come back rejoicing? Yeah, the 70 did. They came back rejoicing. They said, Woo -hoo! look at what God did. We cast out demons. We healed people. Wow. Remember, Jesus even had to say, guys, you know, that's great. But rather rejoice that your name's in the book of life. Be glad that you have eternal life. Be glad that you're saved. I mean, this power is something, but be glad that you have a right relationship with God. That's where it starts with in his brother Bill. But God gave his disciples then power to cast out demons, to heal sick people. In Acts chapter 1, he said that you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you and you shall be witnesses unto me. He said in, Jer in Jerusalem, Judea, and in Samaria, and then where? To the uttermost parts of the earth. How are we going to get the gospel to the world? We, we, I can't do that. We, we can't do that. God can. Amen. And by the way, he has. Yes, he has. Amen? Amen. And, and even in Paul's day, Brother Daniel, he said, the gospel has reached the end of the earth. In Paul's day, Amen. he said, we've gone as far as we can go. We've told people about Jesus, and the world has heard about Jesus. If the church would just stand up and trust in the power of God, we could evangelize the world in a single day. Amen. We're not trusting in the power of God like we ought to. Amen? Is that power for us today? You say, well, you did that in the uh, Apostles' Day. and I mean, I see some great miracles. You know what he said in 1 John chapter 1, and verse 12? He said, but as many as received him, Jesus, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Some of you say, preacher, I would be a Christian, but I just, I'm afraid I can't live it. I don't want to be a hypocrite. I don't want to say I'm a Christian and then get out here and mess up and do wrong. I, I want to live for God. Can I tell you something? God said you can. Amen. As many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Would you believe on his name and then trust God to help you to live the Christian life? 
And as a preacher, why are so many Christians struggling? Because at times, even as Christians, we don't trust God ourselves. See, well, how, how do I access that power? It's, it's, he's, he's powerful. Yes, he is. And he said, I provide that power for you. Amen. Right? Yep. Look at Romans chapter. It's yours. Romans chapter 8. Amen? Mm-hmm. I put my Holy Spirit in you. Yes. That power is available. Amen? Well, how do, I, how do I access that power? How do I plug into the source? How do I, how do I get a hold of God and, and live in the power of God? There's only one way to do that. And that's just by faith. You see, often in the Christian life, we attempt to do something. And then we struggle and we fail. And we we say, well, I guess that power is not really available to me. I don't see God doing what he did in Paul's day. And we start doubting whether or not God's power is available. Can I tell you something? What what happens, Brother Bruce, when we doubt the promise of God? James told us. You pray and you doubt. That God is going to do something? Are you going to receive an answer if you doubt? No. No. Listen, are you going to receive power if you doubt? No. No. You know, the devil's job is to get you to doubt. Do you know that? God said, you can live the Christian life. You can be victorious. And I'll give you all the power you need. And the devil says, I don't know about that. And he said, you know, remember, remember that time when you really started seeking God and started praying and fasting and you really tried to get close to God? Remember how miserably you failed at that attempt? Where was God's power then? Does the devil do stuff like that? Yes. I mean, you, you try to take a step of faith, trust God for something. Be obedient to God as soon as you take the step. The devil says, what are you doing? Are you insane? What do you have to do when you take that step? Trust God. Have faith. Trust God. And the devil comes and says, what are you doing? You say, I'm trusting God. Amen. And the devil says, who do you think you are? The child of God. Mm-hmm. How are you going to do this? It's not me, it's God. Amen. You, know what, you, you know what you're doing when you do that? You're fighting the devil. He, he's not a physical being. We can't go up there and punch the devil in the nose. But he comes to us and he bombards us and he lies to us. And if you're not careful, this is what you do. You do just like Adam and Eve did. You say, well, maybe he's got a point here. And then you disbelieve what God said. And then you do what the devil entices you to do, and then you don't see the power of God working in your life. If you're here this morning, you don't know Christ as your Savior, you know what you could do this morning? You could leave this service knowing that your name is in the Lamb's Book of Life, and if you died, heaven be your eternal home. Amen. You can leave changed. Saved. You can leave a child of God. How is that preacher? How could I do that? And you don't even have to come to this altar, by the way, by receiving Christ as your Savior. By faith. faith. He's already done the work. Amen? Amen. He died, was buried, resurrected. He said, if you'll believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you'll be saved. What does he say? If you'll trust Jesus... Jesus will save you. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Has God ever said, told us something that was untrue? No. no. How do I access that power? I access it by faith. Romans chapter 1 verse 17 says the just shall live by faith. faith. I tried recently to talk to you about walking in the Spirit. I've tried to mention to you how we need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. I don't know how many of you are attempting 
to walk consistently in the fullness of the Holy Spirit. I hope that all of us are. But if you are, you're aware of something. It's a battle. And can I tell you what the battle is? It's a battle of faith. You take that step and say, God, I, as far as I know, there's no sin between us. If there is, God, I want to, I want to deal with it. I don't want nothing between me and you. Amen. I want my heart clean. I want to be right with you, God. Mm-hmm. Wash me in the blood of Jesus. Cleanse me. And Lord, fill me. You get in your car, you're going down the road, someone cuts you off and your spirit is angered in a moment and, you, and the devil whispers, where is that fullness? Where is that power? What do you think you're doing? You know what you should do then? Lord, I was wrong to have that kind of mindset and attitude. I'm sorry, forgive me. And Lord, fill me with your spirit. Amen. Help me, Lord, to walk in the fullness of your spirit. Amen. What I'm, what I'm trying to say to you, it's, it's a battle. Amen. Some of you, when you were just saved, just saved, what happened to you when you left the church or got up off your knees in prayer? What did the devil say? There's got to be more to it than that. I mean, you just pray and ask Jesus to say, I mean, you've got to do something. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's, it, you, there's something else you have to do, right? No! Trust Jesus. Believe on Christ. Receive the Lord. And you'll be saved. There's nothing else to do. So what did you have to do when you got outside the church? When you trusted Jesus, you had to say, No, I've trusted Him. No, I've trusted Him. No, I've trusted Him. And what did the devil do when you said, No, I'm standing on what Jesus said. I believe Him. He had to leave. I'm trying to tell all of us this morning, if we're going to walk in the power, the exceeding greatness of His power, it's going to be by faith. Does does God have the power? Yes. Now, where is that power in the church? I'm I'm not interested in fake power, are you? I want the genuine power of God's Holy Spirit, don't you? Does God want you to be have access to that power? Yes. Yes. Amen. All right, then. Why are you not accessing that power? Because you're not exercising faith. faith. You know what you're doing? You're assuming. Mm-hmm. Right? Remember Jesus and Mary and Joseph went to Jerusalem and Jesus was 12 years old. This is recorded for a purpose. We're almost through. According to a purpose. And then Joseph and Mary left Jerusalem. And they were out, away, about a day's journey out of town. And they said, wait a minute. Where, where is Jesus? Mary, where's Jesus? Well, I thought he was with some of the other family members. They just assumed when they left that he was going to go with them. And we're making the same mistake. Paul said, listen, I want you to know the power of God that's available. Access that power. Live in that power. Depend upon it. You can't be a strong Christian without it. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. So don't assume. Walk in faith. Brother Bruce does something I think is very wise. Sometimes he'll put a little card in his vehicle. He gets in the vehicle and that card reminds him. It may be something like this. Jesus is coming soon. Gets in the vehicle. Jesus is coming soon. Yep. Jesus is coming soon. Jesus is coming soon. Amen? Amen. Or maybe something like this. Let your light so shine. I need to let my light shine. I need to let my light shine. We need to keep it on our mind that God has made the power available to us and we need to walk in that power. We need to expect to see that power and be trusting God for it. Amen? Amen. Just like we trust Him to become a child of God. We have to exercise that same faith. Trust God that God will give us power. Are you struggling with sin? Any of you here struggling with sin? How are you going to get victory over that? 
someone says, well, preacher, I'm trying. I am really trying. You know what I want to plead with you to do today? I want, I want to plead with you, access His power. Say, God, I cannot do this. I need Your power. Amen. 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 I need Your power. Lord, I want Your power. I want to see Your power. I want to see You set me free from this. I don't want to do this anymore. But I cannot do it myself. Amen. Give me power. Well, Amen. Amen. What, what other need do you have as a Christian? Can I tell you something? Jesus will meet that need. Amen. If you'll bring it to Him. Amen? Amen? Again, let me tell you something. It starts, first of all, by being saved. If you're not saved, would you please come to Jesus? Jesus died on the cross so that you could have eternal life. He loves you. He loves you. He loves you. Amen? Amen. Come to Jesus and let Jesus set you free. Would you do that? If you're a Christian, you've got a need in your life. Listen to me. You can't solve it. Amen. There's only one who can. Why don't you bring that to Jesus? Casting all your care upon him. Why? He cares. Because he cares for you. Amen? Amen? Would you do that? If you're lost, come and accept Christ. If you need help, come and say, Lord, help me. And Jesus will certainly do that. Amen. Let's stand for a word of prayer. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for the prayer of the Apostle Paul. It teaches us how to pray. Lord, we are weak, but you are strong. Lord, I can't, but you can. This morning in our Sunday school class, we saw where a rich ruler wanted to know how to get to heaven. And Jesus said, listen, sell all that you have and come follow me. Turn from your way of living, turn from your life and trust me. Let me have your life. That rich young man walked away. And Jesus, you said, it's hard for rich people to be saved. It's so hard. It's like a camel being pulled through an eye of a needle. The disciples said, Lord, then who can be saved? That's impossible. God, you said what's impossible with men is not impossible with God. God can do it. Lord, you can save us. I pray if there's one here this morning that's lost, that they would come and just trust Jesus and give you their heart. Lord, you promised to help them to live a Christian life. Lord, do that for them this, this very day. And they're Christians, Lord. They're hurting. They need some help. Lord, you're the only one that can help us. Lord, give them a, a humbleness to come and kneel and say, Lord, help me. Lord, help me. Lord, would you please bless in this invitation. Help us, Lord, to just be obedient to you this morning. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.